9 I'm Bethany Van Delft and this is the 10 News where we get the lowdown on what's up in the world. It's Tuesday, May 25th. Vaccines for teens, new mask news and more. There's been a lot of updates on the COVID-19 pandemic. And today, we will meet one of the kids that helped test the vaccine. Let's get into the 10. The U.S. has been working hard to kick COVID to the curb. And recently, kids ages 12 to 15 became eligible to get the Pfizer vaccine. And less than a week after it became available, more than 600,000 kids have gotten their first shot. That's 60 kids per minute getting vaccinated. Nice. But what about younger kids? Pfizer says they hope to get the next group, kids ages 5 to 12, approved by September. Trials for kids younger than 12 all the way down to babies are going on right now to make sure the shot is safe for them too. (laughs) Hold on, let's back up. What is a vaccine trial? So vaccines go through three stages of testing on people. The first two are with small groups where doctors can carefully track people in case there are side effects. Then in phase three, the group gets larger, usually with thousands of people. The participants either receive a dose of the vaccine or a placebo, a shot that doesn't include any medicine at all. This way, doctors can compare the people who got the vaccine with those who didn't to see who gets sick. If more people who got the vaccine stay healthy over the people who didn't, they know it works. Cool beans, man. Doctors also measure what's called an immune response to see how the body responds to the vaccine. Kids of different age groups may need different doses of the vaccine, so that's just one part of what the trials are testing. But experts agree that the country needs to vaccinate kids to move past the pandemic and get us closer to normal. Do you want to learn more about getting the vaccine? Well, we've got you covered. Our correspondent Pamela Kirkland recently sat down with a kid who participated in the vaccine trial. COVID-19 vaccine maker Pfizer was recently approved for use in kids age 12 to 15. While that's awesome news, I bet some of you tenors have questions about the vaccine and what it's like to get a shot. So we wanted to talk to Caleb Chung. He was a participant in the Pfizer vaccine trial for kids and his dad, Dr. Richard Chung, a pediatrician at Duke University in North Carolina. Thank you both for coming on the 10. Thank you for inviting us. So, Caleb, tell us about why you wanted to participate in the trial. Well, I mainly wanted to participate in this trial because um, it was a great opportunity that was actually given to me um, as my dad brought back the news in early to mid-December last year that um, a few of his colleagues were like um, starting to move down into the 12 to 15 year old age group. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity to help out and fight back against the virus because there wasn't much I could really do. And how did you feel after you got the shot? Were you nervous at all? Um, I wasn't too nervous because I'm, I believe that the science is reliable and that it's safe. And um, I did experience a few side effects like um, headaches and arm and leg pains as well as fatigue or sore throat and actually a few days ago, I received the news that I, I, w- I actually was one of the people who got the actual vaccine and not the placebo. So I was really excited that I had that protection all along. Dr. Chung, how did you feel about your son participating in the trial? And what was your own vaccination experience like? Yeah, so as Caleb mentioned, we heard about it in December. And so some colleagues at Duke um, were helping to conduct the trial here. When I heard about that, Caleb at the time was 12. And You know, around that time, that was when a lot of the initial news about um, these vaccines, at least for adults, had come out. And so there was a lot of positive news about it being safe and effective in the trials, and people were getting excited about that. Um, As a pediatrician, though, somebody who takes care of a lot of uh, young people, uh, including uh, age 10, um, you know, we've always been, uh, throughout the pandemic, really trying to make sure that kids don't get forgotten about, and eventually that kids could get the protection that they deserve. Caleb kind of mentioned 
it seemed like a really good opportunity because, you know, he had gone through so many months at that point of virtual school and a lot of his activities were disrupted. He wasn't seeing his friends as often as he really wanted to. And, and, you know, at age 12, you're kind of at the point where you're wanting to, to do something yourself, you know, um, you want to be able to take control and, and make your mark on the world. And, and this seemed like a really good opportunity. I got my own shot through the hospital where I work, and then I got my second shot in January. You're both now vaccinated. What are you looking forward to doing? Any fun summer plans? Yeah, I, um, I think in like July, we're going to go on two different vacations with our family, and I'm really excited for that, and that I'll, that I'll be like protected and safe during that traveling. And also um, getting um, back to school in the fall and getting to do my extracurricular activities like um, I'm doing cello and I was doing jujitsu, but obviously it's a lot more difficult and hard online. So I'm really excited to go back in person and that'll be really um, fun. And also getting to see my friends more and just having the um, safety and protection that the vaccine provides will really open up new opportunities. That's very cool. And Caleb, do you have any advice for kids who may be on the fence about getting the vaccine or who are nervous about taking the Pfizer vaccine? Well, it definitely depends on like what their past experience with vaccines has been. Like um, if they just, but I would just say that if they choose to take the vaccine, I think that'd be um, a wise choice because it can really, I believe personally that it can really um, protect you and can really give you an extra layer of safety between you and um, the coronavirus. And it will, and I know there's like a lot of things that are opening up where if you are vaccinated then you get to do more like in-person things without masks. So I think that would be a pretty cool motivation for people who are not that confident in the vaccine. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to us and educate everyone on what the vaccine is and what the experiences are around it. So thank you again. And we'll we'll check in with you guys soon. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Without brave kids like Caleb, we wouldn't have a vaccine today. Thank you, Caleb. And now for some current headlines. Today is the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death, a black man who was killed by police officer Derek Chauvin in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His death sparked protests and outrage around the world about police brutality against black people. There are memorials and events planned around the country and in Minneapolis, the George Floyd Memorial plans to honor and remember him with a celebration. Gotta catch them all? Maybe not. Some stores have stopped selling Pokemon cards. Already, the cards were in short supply because of the pandemic. But long lines and empty shelves have caused so many fights at places like Target and Walmart that the stores decided to remove them from the shelves altogether. One of the newest chess champions is also one of the top players in the world, and he's only 10 years old. That's incredible. Tenetalua Adewumi from New York just earned the title of National Chess Master. Checkmate! June is the month to get proud. Pride Month kicks off in June. There will be parades, festivities, rallies happening all over the country, celebrating the LGBTQ community and promoting dignity, equal rights, self-affirmation, as well as increasing society's awareness of the issues the community faces. Here at The 10, we are so excited to celebrate with stories all month long. All right, it's time for... What? What? What's the big idea? Trivia on the 10. Vaccines have shown us how powerful science can be and how your body reacts to different things. What can eating a blue muffin tell you about yourself? Is it A, how smart you are, B, the sensitivity of your taste buds, or C, the health of your gut microbes? The 
Did you guess it? The answer is C, the health of your gut microbes. A company and a group of scientists recently started something called the Blue Poo Project. It is what you think it is. It works like this. Eat two muffins colored blue with food coloring and wait for them to uh, come out the other end? Yuck. Scientists say that the transit time from eating the muffin to when you see blue poo can tell a lot about the health of the microscopic things living in your digestive system called your microbiome. Your microbiome is made up of bacteria, fungi, and other teeny tiny microbes. While that might sound gross, your microbiome is important for keeping you healthy. Wow. To participate in the Blue Poo Project, grab an adult and head to bluepoopchallenge.com. Track your transit times and learn more about this super science in action. Time's up. But before we go, here's a quick note for the grown-ups. Thanks for listening to The 10 News. Look out for our new episodes Tuesdays, Thursdays, and extras on Saturdays. You can go deeper into today's stories by visiting the10news.com. The 10 News is a co-production of Small But Mighty Media and Next Chapter Podcasts and is distributed by iHeartRadio. The 10 News creative team is baking up some blue breakfast foods and includes Kate Hale, Tracy Crooks, Pete Musto, Jenna Pasqua, and Sarah Olander. Our production director is Jeremiah Tittle and our executive producers are Donald Albright and show creator Tracy Leeds Kaplan. Pamela Kirkland contributed to this episode. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and thanks for listening to the 10 News. Whatever you do, do not send us pictures of your Blue Poo project. Okay, over and out.